Hey, what's up guys? I hope you are doing well today. I have a little primer for you on sculpting and sculpting is something that I didn't get into for a while. It just sounds a little intimidating, like you have to be an artist or something, um, but there's a lot of great uses for it and it's a lot of fun to play with. So you have a sculpting tab up here with a bunch of different options, but they're all grayed out. So we actually have to have something to sculpt on and then it also has to be editable. So if we have a landscape object, we have to hit C to make it editable. And right now I have all of my sculpting tools up. That's because I have my uh, customization layout sculpting layout uh, set. And this is a really nice layout. It has all of your tools right here and everything's ready to go. So just set your layout that way. And then the first thing you have to do is subdivide your object. So one thing about sculpting is you need a lot of subdivisions, otherwise it looks pretty janky. So if we click on subdivide, it's gonna put a little sculpting tag on our object. And then if we click it again, you can see that we're getting a lot more definition and subdivision in our model. So we'll probably do it a couple more times. So the one thing about sculpting is you definitely need a lot of subdivision. Uh, your mesh can get pretty heavy, but that's just sort of the one drawback of using it. All right, so we have our mesh here. Um, so we have all of our tools and you can basically just grab them and treat them like a paintbrush. So you can kind of push and pull. Um, every brush has a size and a pressure. So if we kick up the pressure, it's gonna affect the model more. And you know, you can click the grab and sort of just, I guess it's like uh, treating your model as a piece of clay and just sculpting it, pushing the polygons around. You can pinch stuff together. Um, you can flatten it out. And then we also have our smooth, which if you uh, go a little bit too crazy, you can kind of smooth out some of the edges of the mesh. So anyway, that's all well and good. You got a lot of great tools you can kind of play around with. But what I find to be the most useful is this stamp section. Now, a lot of people will go to the stamp and they'll click load and they'll see that there are no presets. For some reason, there's no presets under stamp, but if you go to the settings tab and click on brush preset here and click load, you're gonna get a bunch of different presets. So it's kind of strange. They're not under the stamp presets. They're under the setting presets under brush. All right, so we have a ton of different uh, really great stamps here. These are actually brushes, I guess. They're all black and white images and they're basically just height maps to sculpt on your object. So for instance, uh, let's click on a screw and we'll click on the edge here and one click and you can see that we already have a little screw. Uh, we can go ahead and change the size of that guy and the pressure. So the pressure will increase sort of how deep that screw uh, affects the model, the mesh. And there you go, we have a little uh, piece of sculpting action using a stamp right there. So you could say that this is uh, like a little relief map, maybe in a ranger station or something, and it's uh, screwed down to the table. So that's pretty cool. Um, the one thing you need to know is sculpting works really well. Um, the stamps work really well until you zoom in really far and then they sort of break down a little bit, um, unless you have more subdivision, which can get pretty intense. But for something like this, it's pretty cool. So if you're a little bit farther out. So you can see that this model is pretty smooth right now and we wanna add a little bit more realism to it. So one thing that we can do is go to our presets and load something like craters. Now, I don't know exactly why this happens, but if you click on craters, you get this weird overlay on here. And I can't figure out how to get that off. So maybe if uh, one of you knows how to do that, you could let me know because um, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing. But if we turn up the size and the pressure a little bit and we click in here a couple times, maybe even turn these up a little bit farther, turn up the pressure, you can click on here a few times. And as you can see, um, it's definitely hard to, to sort of see what you're doing with this guy. But then if we hit reset, you can see what happened. And we're getting a little bit of detail on here. Looks like we could actually increase the pressure a little bit more. So let's reload that, uh, that crater. Let's kick that pressure up to like 250, something like that. And maybe start making a few more clicks here. Could even really crank it up to like 600 and get really intense craters here. And then we'll reset it and see what we got. So already we're getting a lot of nice detail. Uh, you can see this is a great way to sort of touch up some landscapes, give them a little bit more detail. Um, another thing that I like to do is go under this stamp section and actually load up an image. So if we click use stamp and we go to our image, I have this height map that I found online. This is the Grand Canyon and we'll load that in there. 
Um, and you get a little preview down here of what it's going to look like. So I found this, there's a bunch of different height maps on the internet, but I found this one site called terrain.party and they're not incredibly detailed, but they're really cool. So you can go ahead and search. So I'll go to Grand Canyon and I'll pop over to that section on the map. And then if you want, uh, well, you can pick a different area that you want to download. So something over here. And if you click the plus and minus, it'll expand the range of that download. So something like that. And then you just click the download button and it'll save it onto your hard drive. And when you download it, it'll look something like this. So it's not super high res, but it's kind of a cool little feature. And then you can load that up into your stamp, go to your settings and crank those guys up a little bit, crank up the size, and then you can start painting uh, this Grand Canyon type thing on your map. All right, so it looks like we can maybe even kick that up a bit more. And there you go. You're starting to get a lot of really cool detail. So um, it's not super detailed if you go in very far. Uh, if you add some subdivisions, it'll probably help. But as you can see, for something that's a little bit wider, um, it works really, really well. So there you go. There is a quick primer into sculpting. It's uh, a lot less intimidating than you would think, and it's a lot of fun to play around with. So I hope you guys check it out. Definitely load up some of those presets and start uh, pushing polygons around. Um, it's a lot of fun to play with. Thanks, as always, for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.